to others We're all sisters and brothers Do unto others as you'd have them do to you My brother. Hey, good morning. Welcome to this day. You know, yesterday we were talking about how powerful the voice of God is and how He literally spoke creation into existence. I mean, lightning hurls out of His mouth. He spoke light and it existed. And we talked about the expansion of the universe and how majestic and awesome our God is. Today I want to continue on His voice, but another facet, another parallel. Psalm 29, David was writing, Give unto the Lord, O you mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory do His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the cedars of Lebanon. Those palm trees, have you ever imagined trying to break a palm tree? I mean, even in the midst of the, the most violent hurricanes, those palm trees, they just bend and sway because you know why? Their roots are so deep, but the voice of the Lord breaks them. And what a beautiful analogy of how powerful God is. I, there's another verse in Scripture that says, The voice of the Lord is like many waters. Have you ever stood at the edge of Niagara Falls? It's a majestic sight. But have you ever just heard the sound? I mean, the decibels raising to the highest volume that sometimes you have to wear uh, headphones or, or earplugs because the waters are so loud. The voice of the Lord is majestic and powerful. But the scripture also says in Psalm 46, verse 10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. Yes, many times God speaks to us with this thunderous voice when He's trying to rattle our attention or to speak into our lives or to, to speak fear into the enemy that attacks us. But you know, when God spoke to Elijah on Mount Horeb, He could have done so in the wind. He could have caused the earth to quake and to shake and the mountains to tremble. He could have spoken through fire, but He spoke with a still small voice in 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 12. A still, small voice. God asked, what are you doing here, Elijah? He was hiding from Jezebel who threatened to kill him. Elijah's reply revealed what God already knew. He, because of the depth of his fear and discouragement, here's basically what Elijah said. He said, Lord, I have been, I have been your servant. I have faced the enemy. When they have attacked, when they have attacked your name, when they have forsaken you, and here, what do I get for being the only one that stands up for you? Now, really, was Elijah the only one that was standing up for God? No. The Scripture even teaches us that there were seven thousand men in Israel that refused to bow their knee to Baal, the false god. This is what happens a lot of times when we begin to isolate ourselves, when we begin to go whether it be because of mourning, whether it be because of depression, whatever emotion that's causing us for, from being in the circulation of society, we begin to isolate ourselves. And that's a very dangerous place. Let me just let you know that. When you begin to isolate yourselves from community of believers, those that can encourage you, partner with you, pray with you, lift you out, a lot of times, that's a very dangerous place for us. Elijah wasn't the only one serving God. It seemed that way to him. But God had 7,000 men in Israel who refused to bow the knee. And a lot of times, we suffer these kind of emotions and fears right after our biggest victory. I've often, said, I've often heard preachers talk about this, that the most dangerous day of their week was Monday morning. After... A day of Sunday when God's people are there and it's a time of celebration to celebrate the risen King. It's a time of worship and we're amongst all these believers and we have and God's working in our lives and it's an amazing and it's amazing time. And they said, you know, I refuse to take Mondays off because it's a day where the, the enemy will begin to speak to me. I like to stay in the flow and to stay around my believers and around my support group and around my friends. I usually take Thursday or Friday off. I've heard many pastors say that. 
The morning after effect is what I call it. Many times after great success and the height of victory in our lives, we too can be like, be like Elijah. In the, we can go straight to the depths of fear and despair. We think that we're the only ones serving God as he did. And we've got to be very, very careful after we experience that mountaintop of victory. We've got to be very careful for the morning after. And friends, the sooner that we focus on God and the sooner that we begin to worship His power and His majesty and give Him glory and strength as Psalm 29 teaches us to do, that's how we will be guarded from fear. And another one of the greatest tools that the enemy uses for the believers is self-pity. And Elijah was experiencing that self-pity right there after his great success. There's many things in our lives that will drown out the voice of God. You know, my wife sings a song. It's called Quiet Answers. And we've implemented it back into our program as of the last few weeks simply because I love the message and I think it speaks to people. The song basically talks about how many times that we pray for God to move in our lives and we expect these miracles to happen. And truly, He's a God of miracles. Make no mistake about that. He is as powerful and as majestic and beyond our comprehension. But so many times we think that our prayers go unanswered because so many areas of our life or so many people in our life have drowned out the voice of God. And we don't hear that God has spoken to us like He did with Elijah, not through the wind, not through the earthquakes and the mountains to be moved and cast into the midst of the sea, and not through fire, but God spoke to us and He answered our prayers with a still, small voice. Quiet hearts will listen for God and they will meditate upon His Word. Clashing symbols of our failures and the loud trumpeting of our successes can drown out God's still small voice. Today, I encourage you, don't be down in fear. Don't allow yourself to be trapped in self-pity. Be still and know that He is God. God bless you in Jesus' name.